Yo, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Kel the Music Kid, on Diva Talk Tonight, the podcast show. I got my co-host, Brandy Ellis, Diamond Brown, you know, and our special guest that we have today. She's a beautiful girl. And as a matter of fact, she was on uh, my other show, Diva Talk Tonight, when we had a larger production. She was one of the deep dive girls. Deep dive, yeah. You remember that, Brandy? <laughs> were you there that time? Yep. Oh, I was there. Yeah. 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 I, I probably called you. Like, girl, are you coming? I had to talk. Where you at? You know? Everyone, please welcome Miss Kendra Quillen. Welcome. Yeah, sexy, sexy. You look great. Thank you. No wonder why you was one of the Diva Dive girls. You, <laughs> you got that look. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. I try. Yeah. <laughs> so now you are a music artist. I am. Yeah. Would you consider yourself for R and B, hip hop, what category you fall? Hip hop and R and B. Yeah. Um, I sing and I also rap. Mm-hmm. From time to time, just because I feel like I know how. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So I rap sometimes, but singing is my passion. Singing is your passion. Okay. Who are some of your musical influences? Tony Braxton, number one. Okay. Um, Brandy and um, Jasmine Sullivan, mm-hmm. Beyonce, Whitney Houston, mm-hmm. you said Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotta put it in order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like I did Whitney live. Mm-mm. No, she's not live on my list. No. Right, right, right. Did you uh, see the Jasmine Sullivan challenge? Um, yes, I did. did you do I it? was practicing it, and I um I went to Brandy because I wanted to make sure she could do it, and then she could. <laughs> I knew she could. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I, I can't. I mean, I know that I probably can with practice. I do my own. Yeah. And I just don't got time for people like that. Wasn't it? And yeah. It's all that comparison. Yeah, all the compa- yeah. I didn't have time at the moment. I'm like, mm. Let me, let me work on it. I'm going to work on it. But, yes, I did, mm-hmm. I did see that. And I'm like, that's beautiful. Which challenge was it? It was like Rick. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, see, I cannot do it. But no, it was like yeah, something yeah. like that. That, that was something. Cool. Cool. Damn. But it was something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. <laughs> so, how far do you want to go in the music game? Do you want to be a local artist? Do you want to be a global artist? What do you feel comfortable doing? Um... I'm, I'm definitely working right now to be local. Um, I w- I'm from Oakland. I would love for, like, to have my city behind me um, mm-hmm. because I want to go other places. Um, I plan to move soon. I want to move to Atlanta just because it's the Black Hollywood. Um, no matter what all the other the things that people are saying about Atlanta, it's fake. It, it's fake everywhere. It's fake in L.A. <laughs> it's fake in Oakland. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've experienced these things. And so... Um, I want to go to Atlanta and just kind of, you know, and, but but to move somewhere else, but to have your city kind of just, so local first, of course, I'm working towards that, and then um, I want to go to, I want to be big. Yeah. I want to be big. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't feel like I write within my, the way I write, I don't feel like I write within my, like, city or, like, where I'm from. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you cannot even tell where I'm from when I write. Right. I mean, I've been so, it you know. It doesn't sound local. It sounds yeah, like, like mainstream. You know, yeah, it's national. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, where do you place your style among this current crop of songstresses? Mm. Who would you compare yourself to? Um, I really feel like I'm different, like, honestly. Um, but I always hear the Keisha Coles and the K. Michelle. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes I do um, things like Tony, probably because I listen to her so much. She has a deep voice, Tony. She does. <laughs> and I can sing that low. right now body body yes with uh, featuring goldie from federation yes i remember body. federation it yeah. was popping during the hiking mm-hmm. movement i was yeah, in yeah. high school around that time yeah oh, okay mm-hmm. nice. so how'd you guys link up uh, he 
he DM'd me this one time, and he he was like, I feel you. Like, um, he just out of the blue, just like, you know, just kind of. Um, I feel you. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, he, he was like, I feel you. Like, with my music, I think he, like, um, he likes it a lot. And he was like, you're ready. Like, he also told me, like, you're ready. They don't know this yet, but you're ready. Like, you know, you have everything. And I'm like, I mean, you know, whatever happens, however it happens, it's supposed to happen, you know. And But he was just like, I feel you on these songs. Like, I mm-hmm. mean, you... I love your songs. And so I'm just like, yay, like, this is crazy that he was reaching out to me and um, because of, like, the history and, like, in high school and me playing him. Never thought, I mean, Mm -hmm. of course, I think I'm going to meet everybody in the industry because I plan to be in the industry. Right, exactly. But I just, listen to a song in high school, I'm like, oh, never thought this would happen, honestly. Mm -hmm. But um, he's, like, a legend to me. Mm -hmm. He's really good. Mm -hmm. Like, really, really good. Like, his ear um, and how he raps and the things that he's able to listen to hear, like, he's really good to me. So, like, he's like a legend to me. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, too, like, speaking of Bay Area artists, you know, besides him, are there any others that you support? Yes. Yeah. My favorite rapper is E-40. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. My, that's my favorite rapper. Like, I love everything he do. He does no wrong. Kind of like Tony Braxton. <laughs> he does no wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, all except he's a fan of the 49ers. Oh, I'm a Raiders fan, but I mean that's the only thing, you know. But no, yeah, he does no wrong in my eye. That's my favorite rapper. So that's why I listen to Bay Area wise as far as rappers. Mm-hmm. I like all black. Mm-hmm. Um, Kata Boy. Um, um, Young Dizzle. Um, mm-hmm. AB of YH. Uh, these must be newer rappers, huh? Like they are. I mean, it's a couple of them that I work with. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait, who? <laughs> yeah, these, these, these are people that I have worked with, but like okay. they're slept on. Right, oh, right, yeah. yeah. They're slept on, okay. so yeah. But yeah, okay. check them out. Yeah, <laughs> check them out. Y'all. Got to support a local yeah, Bay Area artist, you know? Yeah. And uh, which big name producers do you think could bring the best out of Pedro Quillen's sound? Mm. Right now, I really feel I've been working with Lunacy, and I know that he's a producer. He has hasn't produced anything for me yet, but just working with him, he worked with me on my vocals and stuff. So, um, and I see like the work that he do. I'm like, oh yeah, he's like very versatile. Him and um, CC, I've um, attempted to work with him, and we've worked together before. Uh, we didn't finish our session or anything like that, but um, because I moved on to something else, some other I'll be all over the place. But um, I will, I, he's very versatile as well. I, I think that I can work with him, and then he brings something good out of me. And Kata Boy, um, mm-hmm. a really good friend of mine. Um, anything I want, he'll pretty much do it. Like mm-hmm. if I tell him what type of sound I want. Mm-hmm. But th- just those three: CC, Kata Boy, and Lindsay. Those That's are cool. really good producers for me. Got your own little network, own circle. Yeah, yeah. I'm very cool. grateful for that. Yes, so like definitely. Yeah. Need a solid team. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Now, are you signed to a label or a management company, or are you just doing it straight up independent? Like, I am independent. You are your own businesswoman. Yes, mm-hmm. I am. I am. Yes. That see, see y'all. <laughs> That's how you gotta get down. You know. <laughs> yeah. And you write all your own material? I do. Yes. Yeah. I write everything. Yeah. Yeah, because my producer and I were listening to that to that song. Why do you like that? Sounds pretty good. Yeah, I wrote like, that. Like production quality is very on point. Yeah. Sounds like a mainstream track. Yeah. And it was on KMO, right? Thank you. Yeah, it was on KMO. Nice. They yeah. played it. I'm like, I was asleep one day, or one night, and I woke up, and then I had hit the text messages and DMs like, no, we heard you. Did I'm you get like, to hear it? Did you get to hear it? I, mm-hmm, no. I didn't. But that is like one of my wildest dreams. Mm-hmm. So like, so that came true, right? But um, it was like, you know, something that I thought that how it would happen in my head, mm-hmm. it happened like that. And I'm like, oh, so that's so dope. I think back in the days, I would have blew from that, you know. <laughs> but n- these days, it's a little different. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a lot different. And then, like, it's like, it's kind of like who you know and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I came here, I came in, and I, I started recording professionally. I literally put myself in this whole school situation. Mm-hmm. Nobody carried me. My family's not musically inclined, like, to where I don't have a background in music. Mm-hmm. So I had to figure this all out by myself. So that's big. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. And bring your singer too, and diamonds on two singers. Did I see? Oh my god. Yeah. You need some backup mm-hmm. singers. Me, me, in the background, <laughs> you know. Way in the back. I'm not shy. I'm a backup too. So like, you know, whoever like, seriously, I love to work and I love to sing.
thing. Yeah. Be attaching to myself. Y'all ever need somebody? I can. I can see. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. I don't remember you saying that. Yeah. Right, right. Like, you blow up and you be like, who? Right, right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember that. No. I'm like a down to earth, y'all. I'm like, mm-mm. I won't do nothing like that. No. Okay. <laughs> Where can people reach you if they want to listen to your music? Um. Are you really on Spotify and iTunes? And I am. Spotify? Everything is my name, Keja. Nothing else. I'm just like, um, he don't say everything on my social media handles. Um, he don't say. Spell it. Um, so it's K E I D R A on stage. So K E I, because people are like, hey, I E. I'm like, I know. So it's <laughs> it's, it's E I. K E I D R A on stage. And that's YouTube. I'm trying to like blow my um, subscribers up on mm. YouTube. I'm trying to like start monetizing them and. You know, so everything's keep going on stage. Keep it on stage, y'all. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, so now I kind of want to switch the topics a little bit. You know how we always get into our deep conversations about things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so singer, songwriter, and producer Jaguar Wright from Philly is exposing everybody in uh, in series of IG rants. Have you guys been hearing about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I heard something yeah. about it. I found out about it on media takeout. Like, she's just, like, exposing everybody. I watch a lot of YouTube, so mm-hmm. that's just he popped oh, up pops in your feed little yeah. clips and all that kind of I stuff. I haven't seen so media takeout in a minute. Yeah, media <laughs> takeout still out there. Yeah. Still hanging on, huh? Yeah, yeah still <laughs> hanging on. Yeah, yeah. Still bashing oh, people. <laughs> good, you know, good black folks well, and everything. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, so let me give you guys uh, Jaguar Wright's background. Um, if you know 90s Neo Soul, you should remember Jaguar Wright from short-lived uh, notoriety, singing background and touring with The Roots. She came up with Badu and Joe Scott, but then disappeared. And from the things she, she sang in the videos, we can see why. Uh, she had one acclaimed re-record titled Denial, Delusions, and Decisions released in 2001. Uh, Jaguar has been in the industry writing songs since she was a teenager, she may be responsible for many of the hits we love without the proper credit. Her uncle is Kent Gamble of the legendary production team from Philadelphia, Gamble and Huff. Uh, without going into the details on the individual celebrities and details which are all alleged as far as we are concerned, um, I think the issues that she touches on are very real and worthy of discussion. So my first question is, um, has the glamorous veal been lifted off of the 90s era hip-hop dynasty and have we been praising a bunch of gold dip Glamorous Bill been lifted off of the 90s era hip hop dynasty? Um, I'm not sure. Like, like, sort of kind of like you. Like, I don't get starstruck and stuff, mm-hmm. but I think that, um, I think that we kind of look at the stars and the light because they're like not reachable. So yeah. we kind of look at them in a certain light, like, oh my God. And then we treat the people in front of us a certain way. Like, you know what I mean? Right. When they're, like, probably golden, too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Versus them. And it's just, it's just like, you know, the glamorous. Like, and, um, I don't praise them. I'm happy that they're able to stand the test of times and able to still stand and look a certain way. Mm-hmm. Although behind closed doors, they might be going through it and mm-hmm. things like that. So I don't judge like really I don't judge anything unless I really know you I don't mm-hmm. even like speak on stuff unless I really know the facts right. so, so if you saw I don't know like who's hot right now if you saw Future in the streets 
They would be like, ah! They'd I was like, like, oh my god, am I looking at teacher right now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, you know what I mean? Can I take a picture? Right. No, that, I guess so. I mean, I would probably, I would do that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not cool. like faint, like Michael Jackson, I'll faint. Right. You guys have been where you see people faint and cry? Yeah. What's up with that? Like, Michael Jackson, I don't care. I'm paying certain colors and pictures in certain place, so yeah. she brings somebody. Yeah. Dang. Uncontrollable. Right. Like, I've seen just, I saw, um, I remember a long time ago, remember the group Immature? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Some girl sat on Marcus Houston's lap and he was singing to her and her legs locked up. Oh. And she couldn't move. Yeah, yeah. Body yes. reacts in really interesting no, ways yeah. when you're emotionally Whoa. charged. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, I understand because he's fine; he's a good-looking dude. But damn, she had a crush on him. She thought he was sexy, <laughs> right? And she couldn't <laughs> take it, right? Yeah, that's what that was. That's probably the Me Too back in the day. Too, so. <laughs> so, from what uh, Jaguar alleges, talent is not the deciding factor. She talks about hearing an acclaimed record producer telling his team to promote the least talented artist so that the record label can maintain control over them. Are stars really made, not born in this industry? I think it's a little bit of both. We obviously see people out here winning. They should be like, huh? <laughs> Especially when you get to hear them vocals without the extras. You'd be like, huh? <laughs> but um, I think it's, you mentioned that earlier, it's relationships mm-hmm. to, you know, and some people are said to be more marketable than others, which I'm not mm-hmm. agreeing or disagreeing right, with. Right, I'm just right. saying. So, um, obviously, the business is about money. You would like to think it's about talent and money, but I'm thinking for the business people behind the scenes, it's more about money. the bottom line, the dollar. So, mm-hmm. again, if you're talking about control, which is going to help you with your money, then that would make sense if you're cookie cutting out people and you're saying you're going to look like this talk like this do this and they do it um then in your eyes it's a win-win situation Mm -hmm. um but i definitely think there's real talent out there Mm -hmm. i think real talent can stand on its own depending on who it's attached to yeah the person what they're willing to go through what they're not willing to go through Mm -hmm. um and that kind of stuff so yes I'm amazed that there are still some winners. <laughs> right. I believe they're completely in y'all. <laughs> so true. And the music industry is just so overpopulated. It's kind of mm. hard to... Saturated. Right. Yeah. Like, you can't even really pick out which artist is real and which yeah. one is, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's created by the labels. Last. The good ones, I think, last. People mm-hmm. who create the fan base um, through being their authentic... Like, Pink, she came out Oh, she was her. cool, right? That first yeah, album, we were, I, I ain't gonna even lie. When she came out with her second album, I was like, what is this? Uh, when she I, did, like pop rock music? Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. listened to all of that, but that's just not what I knew her as. So I was like, I thought it was the other way around. I thought she was the R&B girl and they made her go the other route. But it right. turns out it was the other way around. Mm-hmm. You're a white girl who can sing soulfully, so we gonna make you like this. Mm-hmm. We gonna do you like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It worked. That did, you know, she it worked. She had some hits. Yeah, it worked to get her name out there and all stuff. Um, but I don't like feeling tricked as a viewer, <laughs> as a listener. I was like, what is this? But I love her voice. I ended up listening to the other albums to instill like her. But so mm-hmm. I think a true fan is going to follow you if you got some real talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you don't got no real talent, you're going to learn that real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's gonna die. They don't get their money and then kick you to the side or shelve you or whatever you call it yep. and move on to the next. A lot of one hit wonders. Yeah, yeah. girl, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get a 360 deal, you don't make that much money, now you're broke. I know, yeah. You know. How about you, Diamond? What do you think? Um, I agree. I would agree with you with Pam. Because, you know, like, um, what's her name? Jaguar Wright. She was saying how a lot of the artists can't sing. And I remember mm-hmm. there was something. Allegedly about Monica, about how she came out and she didn't really know how to sing, but she had all these, you know, hit songs and stuff like that, and then she did a, some kind of festival or whatever, and then she was cracking and all this stuff, and mm. she was like, oh, you can't even sing, and whatever. So, I mean, I'm sure it happens. Because um, even in, like, I think, like, China or Japan or something, they have, like, um, Dang, I don't know like the exact words, but y'all know what it is. Y'all in the comments, you know. 
type of that is? Where uh, they the Chinese people or the Japan Japanese people? <laughs> <laughs> my brain is glitching right now. <laughs> Don't judge my life, but uh, <laughs> but like they like kind of like put together like the boy bands or girl mm. bands, and like they literally like raise them from K-pop. Like, yeah, like they raise them from like kids on up to like become like this machine mm-hmm. of a. Uh, Music thing. Thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like whether they wanted to do it or not, you know, I don't know. But yeah, so sometimes, you know, you can make a star. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, mean, I remember when uh, Alicia yeah. Keys first came out, she said that, uh, I think, I forgot what label she went to, but they told her they wanted her to be, you know, like a. Neo Soul? No, like a. Like a Britney Spears, you know what oh, I mean? Just really? like wearing cute outfits and wow. being half naked. Yeah. That's and why she likes Clyde, because he let her be her. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. She kind of it. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it goes to show you that labels are like that. Um, mm-hmm. I remember uh, I auditioned for Columbia Records a long time ago for this girl group, and I came in there with my own material, whatever, and they were just like, um, you know, can you wear you know, these type of clothing? You know, are you willing to dye your hair? Mm-hmm. Are you willing to cut your hair? Are you willing to just change your whole image? Really? And I'm just like, well, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, right, right. You know what I mean? Right so, answer, but wrong answer. Right. <laughs> and I know that would have been, you know, something to be in a group and sign to a major label, touring and everything. But I'm just like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not one of the Spice Girls. You know no, what I mean? Oh, no, definitely. That's <laughs> yeah. what took a huge toll on you in your life, your mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No. How would you feel if they told you you need to? change your image or who you are, would you do it? No, I couldn't do it. Not my image and who I am. I'd be mm-hmm. like, nah, not mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no. Because I'm trying to think, like, what are the lyrics that I'm, like, putting out? That's what right. I'm Like, what if they have you on some WAP shit? Like, who <laughs> would you? <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it for the life of me. Like, honestly, I'd be like, I mean, you know, you get to that point as an artist. I mean, me, I do. I'm not sure if you do it. Be tempted to, like, I, I got to say. Mm-hmm. I, Sorry. <laughs> okay, I got stuff to say, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but I'm like, you know, you get tempted sometimes because I'm like, I mean, not to be a bad girl, but to be like, I'm an adult. Like, yeah. Can't I do whatever yeah. I want to do? And like, um, but no, I cannot because me, my thing is like, I have little brothers, like, you know what I'm saying? I have a niece that's right behind me that I got to like hold this down, like, but this is who I am anyway. But I'm just saying, when I do want to slip up, like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? When I do want to, and I do get mad at the world or get mad at the industry, and I want to put certain stuff, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um, I do get tempted and stuff like that, but it'll be, like, who I am. But, you know, a years from now, it'll be, I look at it, that was a mistake. Mm-hmm. Because I was working with feelings or I was being emotional or something yeah. like that. So, I just, you know, I try to just, you know, stay focused and... Let God lead me to brighten my songs and stuff like that. I got some songs that I don't, that are adult, like, you know what I'm saying? I got, like, you know, mm-hmm. sexy songs and stuff like that where I'm saying stuff. And, but that's me. But I just don't want to change my image. I just want people to know me as somebody who sings. And, um, like, I speak my mind, but I'm, like, singing for the people. Mm-hmm. Like, stuff that mm-hmm. other people can, like, literally really relate to. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. fake stuff. I just mm-hmm. don't want to be fake mm-hmm. at all. Uh, writing music is like writing in your diary, right? Like yeah, it, it really, really is. Feelings. Yeah, it really is. And mm-hmm. like, for, even for a minute, like I was writing, um, because I was scared to be vulnerable. So it was like really hard for me to talk about my personal stuff. I will only write about stuff that I know that my brother is going through or my sister is mm-hmm. going through. Mm-hmm. So you know, like, but I tell a story, and I'm gonna start writing like that. You know, mm-hmm. my stuff. But that's how I write for other people. So nice. That's all right. I like it. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, the power, the money, the fame, but most important seems to be the power. Sexual favors for access and exposure. Men forsaking their own manhood for the opportunity to do what they love. I mean, I'm sure women deal with it working at Walmart somehow, (laughs) but how would you feel if your man came home and told you that he had to do something strange to get on? I'm like, did you use a condom after this? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring that shit back here. Yeah. Mm. It'll make you question 
everything is so, you know, like, it's so, so, like, why are you even coming to me with this? You should have answered that over there. Why do you have to bring this into our home? It's just like, what else would you do if you would go that far just mm-hmm. to get on? You know, if you're going to be with these people mm-hmm. and more things are going to be coming that you're going to want or that they're going to want or whatever. Like, how is that going to play out? Right. That's, that's the beginning. Is. That's the beginning. So, who knows what else is down the road? Yeah. So, I don't know. We have to debate. And that's like, what if a woman did it? You know what I mean? Like, got to question her too. Like, casting couches she's no and, different. Yeah, both sides. I think mm-hmm. both. Men and women, I ain't gonna say equally, but I'm sure there's players involved mm-hmm. that be abusing their power, their position, mm-hmm. if they can, for whatever they want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Hopefully, well, each partner has a huge support system within each other, right? Yeah. And they can kind of steer them in the right direction and like open mm-hmm. their mind, like, we don't need this, or mm-hmm. you yeah, know, like, we'll not be fine, like this. You, know? <laughs> you know, not like this. You know? mm-hmm. What would you do in that particular situation with the guys like? Telling you everything, but um, so what you doing tonight? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, if somebody like, like, can you like restate the question? Like, basically, like, what if someone wanted a sexual favor in return for something? Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we get bold on this show. Is it cute? <laughs> What's your they make it a little bit easier. <laughs> don't act like people don't think about it. Like if you really been no, trying your damn this no. to be this or be that, <laughs> and you finally get this opportunity, and it's somebody that was cute that you would have talked to anyway. Yeah. You know, you thoughts in your head. You'd be like, well, <laughs> if it wasn't under this umbrella, I would have went out. You, you know, you said make it okay in your mind first. I think at some point, maybe we all do it. Um, probably not. For many, and really, you know, but um, or maybe we all don't do it. Okay, <laughs> but um, depending I think on how big the deal is, it, it just depends. Like, like you know, sex for like certain like favors and stuff like that. Um, it depends. Like some people don't have an emotion there and tend right. to do things like that, and like because they got their eyes on the prize, and some people cannot tamper with that something so sacred, and they just like no. So like to each your own. I just, I just, I'm in. Like, how I come up and, like, what I've been around and what I've been exposed to, I've been around situations like that. And I don't judge it. I'm just like, you know, mm-hmm. don't let it make you. Right. You make that situation. Don't let that situation make you. And um, you'd be safe in the process. And <laughs> hopefully you don't have to, like, do that forever. You know? Hopefully you have a platinum album. Yeah, yeah like, or something, you know. <laughs> it's a risk. It's, it's definitely it's risky. Gamble, it is. You know, it is. Right. You got some people who are just like really, some men are like, really, even women, but some men are just like really open to like, um, that's what they want to do. They want to give yeah. you the world, but they want to feel loved too. And it's like that. So you just never know. Mm. Yeah. 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 What about you, Diamond? You ever been in those situations? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you want to be in those situations? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Significant other, if he came home, was like, Look, I got paid. Nah, but I had to do something for it. Some money, but now nah, you gotta pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even have to be nothing sexual. Just like if it were mm-hmm. dude, my dude, and they talk about you gotta come out on your album cover wearing dresses and holding umbrellas. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, that's a good one. No. Right, yeah. yeah. What is you thinking? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. no. Yeah. Like, yo, music. I'm, this is a naive statement, but I'm like, your music should stand on its own, but we all know it is relationships, and if you're dealing with major people who could block you and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. it's a real thing that people, some people will consider, some people are like, hell no, nah. you yeah. know, there ain't no way, and I and I feel that, like she said though, but some people, you don't know what their situation guys are, I got eight kids at home, my mama got cancer, she got yeah, $10 yeah. million dollars in bills, and I got this opportunity, 
You like the door locked? <laughs> I mean, but that's why you shouldn't judge people because you just, it's not always about getting on and get on and get fame. That's a byproduct of getting on. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there's so much stuff going on. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying it yeah, shouldn't. Right. I'm just saying when people be like, oh, they this and they that, you never really know why. But if it was me, if it was my dude, I'd be like, I don't think you need to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just me. Mm -hmm. I said, we can figure it out. It's a lot of independent artists. I'm sure it's somebody out there that'll mess with you that ain't making you do all that. So yeah. let, let's try it some other ways first. And then you can consider <laughs> being in a relationship so it'll be like automatically kind of like no. And then when mm. you're single, you doing your own thing. You know what I'm saying? Gotta do what you gotta do. What you will. You yeah. set your own boundaries. Yeah. What you okay with, go for it. Yeah. What you're not okay with, you shouldn't do to get on. So yeah. if you would have did it anyway, then go for it. Get a hook up because of it. Mm -hmm. so. But if that's not you, that's not your thing, that's not how you ride, then yeah. sit your ass down. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Right. We hope. Right. Well, I guess that's why they got the only fans. Girls could make money that way yep. without having to do some physical favors. Yep. Put it on the net. You know? That's right. Membership. Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe, <laughs> damn it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <clears throat> How much real talent do you think the world has missed out on because people mm. just walked away from their dream instead of mm. putting it all up for sale? I, I mean, I felt a lot of emotions within just, um, you know, being an underground artist. So I, I can only imagine um, a lot of people giving up mm -hmm. and just thinking that going to work is easier or, um, you know, being confined or whatever to this world and it's thinking that that's easier. So mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of talented people. I mean, because there's a lot of videos on, like, that be streaming. Yeah. They be the homeless people, like, kind of right. crazy people. And they be just doing music or something, you know, and, like, making beats and singing. I'm like, oh, my God, all that talent is just mm -hmm. on the streets like that. So you never know that what their situation was. Maybe they feel like, you know, they couldn't sell their soul or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's why they come out with America's Got Talent and yeah. all those other reality shows American Idol to give right. the typical human being a chance yeah. to yeah. show their talent. Yeah. 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 That's cool. So why are American consumers so starstruck anyway? Because it's shoved down our throat. I was gonna say we kinda of brainwashed a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. I think so. Everything is fabricated. Um, yeah. They kind of make you believe that um, certain stuff is supposed to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. Like, mm -hmm. home is not even, like, not a good place to be a lot of times anymore. Everybody want to be something else and yep. somewhere else. Like, you know, you cannot even tend to home no more. Like, everybody have a phone. Mm -hmm. You can be online and be in everybody else's life. Yeah. I mean, you can be accepted. And you can get your feelings hurt too. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, you gotta detox from some of that stuff. Yep. Why we turn off social media sometimes? Take uh, a break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I've been starting to see other sides of certain people. Like, uh -oh. no, you yeah. know what I mean? Just yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Those are your thoughts, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We just kicked it last week. Okay. <laughs> I'm friends, you know. Yeah, a lot of people getting unfriended these days. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. I hate to be petty like that, but... No, you... No, it's not petty. Mm -hmm. It's you yeah. filtering what you're seeing on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. That matters. Mm -hmm. yep. That matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That matters. Yeah. So, I mean, you ever been in a wrong situation with that. where, like, unfriend somebody because of... Their political views, or yeah, uh, no, but all her friends have pants. Right, or I don't really be on social media like that. Like I just like kind of schedule my friends. So when you mm -hmm. see me posting, it's not really me. Oh, okay, <laughs> oh, that's smart. That's smart. <laughs> okay, um, but I think that people are very sensitive to like the truth sometimes but then they're also are sensitive to the fake news so then they have mm -hmm. to take a break but a lot of people are doing way too much in their um, freedom of speech <laughs> 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 like I don't know I'm sensitive yep. I don't want to start no beef <laughs> <laughs> alright yeah. so these things that uh, 
Jaguar uh, are revealing have to take a toll on the mind. Uh, there is no wonder that drug use is prevalent. Uh, do you think they are really happy? Does the money ease the trauma? I think the money just kind of helps them bypass a lot of times. Mm. They can shop. They can, a lot of problems that they would have, they could probably pay to get them out the way. Mm-hmm. But nothing can control your mind. Right. Nothing can um, mm-hmm. help your mind except if, you know, you you, you fix that. Mm-hmm. Money cannot fix your mind. Right. So Money, drugs, and alcohol. Not your thoughts. Um, right. Not your spirituality. Um, mm-hmm. Not how you feel. Mm-hmm. But it only helps a little bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 it could. When you're able so, to pay the mortgage, that money. Uh, yeah, a lot, of stress, a lot of stress is off of you. You know what I'm saying? Money takes a lot of stress off of you. Yeah. But, um, I don't know, I think we see a lot of times, like, you know, situations with Britney Spears, Michael Jackson. You got all the money in the world. But, mm-hmm. you know, money takes care of you, right? So, yeah. 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 That's true. Just don't get so caught up in right. all this other stuff. That's true. So uh, Jaguar also said that the entire East Coast, West Coast, Biggie, Tupac beef was all an act, an actual marketing scheme that Diddy and Suge, well, all of them were in on to sell records. It's believable because we pay attention. After that, the same scheme has been used over and over. Every time 50 Cent drops an album, he's created beef with someone, the whole 69 beefing with the world. It's all to sell records. Are we really that gullible, ladies and gentlemen? Ladies and gentlemen? I think people... Some people know stuff is not real, but you like it anyway because it's drama. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's something to escape from your reality. Mm-hmm. So it's something to talk about, something to complain about, something to troll about. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't. I don't think people are necessarily being. Some people are, but I don't think overall you're being duped. I don't think people care. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's just something to pick a side on and. Mm-hmm. Something to do. Something to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have to say, something to do. And I think we see um, a lot of artists so much in the light, and we don't have that light so much. Like, mm. do we get mad and we want to spread a rumor. Or right. We want to see them down. So, ho- not me personally, I'm just saying us. I'm just talking. But, in you know, in general, <laughs> we want to see them down. Like, so um, people lie all the time, create fake news. And I think people know that negativity is what's. Popping like kind of like mm-hmm. you know TMZ and like they just yep. kind of give negative news like you know it's so people business. Right. We see everybody walking the red carpet, everything looks good and glamorous, and you see that person fall, that's gonna be huge. Like mm-hmm. fall, you know, mm-hmm. like even at the grocery stores, like they are like I don't know who's selling these magazines, but they're really lies, and we know that they're lies. <laughs> like yeah. oh, this man grew. Was just pregnant and yeah. just on the front thing, and we we grab it to buy it like and we what? Goes, like what? Let me read. And we go, that's not true. Right, right, like right. it's just so just you know attractive or what's the word? Like kind of like it's addicting yeah. to like bad news. It's just addicting. Like imagine all the stuff that you hear about like Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? <laughs> Every time I walked in the grocery store and look on the, yeah. the magazine, there's always just some. Mm-hmm. Megan's about to leave, uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Prince Harry. Um, he don't like black folks all of a sudden. You know what yeah, I mean? It's just, yeah, just, yeah. Too much. Like, it's just, like yeah. wow. Like, that, but that's what the media does. They yeah. take one thing and put a spin to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get them viewers, listeners, followers. And I think that's how they get us with the whole chiming yeah. in mm-hmm. and being a part of that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're so used to seeing them in the light, and then we mm-hmm. want to see them in the dark, so they know that. So. Mm-hmm. Like what, what's the name Takashi Six Nine? Like his whole thing just Yeah. <laughs> He's I can't believe that situation. And he be popping up everywhere and stuff. I'm surprised no goons be following him or like, like you, that. You get, like, I'm just like why, wonder why? <laughs> I mean, when we talk about things being orchestrated, yes, yes that's exactly. true. That's true. Because I'm that's just shocked true. Nicki Minaj with a song with him. I well, like, girl. I just don't like Nick. I mean, not that I don't like her anymore, but I like the old Nicki Minaj. Um, mm-hmm. Just like her doing that song with him. Even 50 Cent, like, I mean, they all did this big video, like, with him or whatever, like, mm-hmm. a couple in a, other artists. I'm like, okay. My thing was the whole 
rainbow hair. <laughs> so before the snitching, that was a problem for me. <laughs> it just really wasn't. No mm-hmm. nothing. Like, you could do whatever you want to do. Yeah. But, like, it was just, like, it was the rainbow hair for me. And it was, like, the rainbow teeth and the tattoos and just, mm-hmm. like, you know, like rapping. He used to... A caricature a character, of something like, of or something. someone's. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Built much? Huh? Built much? Built much? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, who listens to that guy's music? I never have one track, but just damn, like. Just, I don't know. No song. I just, you listen to some? You got Uh-oh. some songs that you like? Uh-oh. It's okay. You can like them. I do like them. No. Okay. It's oh. some songs that you like? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I, I don't know his music, so I was say Do he have an album? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Somebody listening to his bar. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they making music with him. Somebody, somebody listening somebody to him. Somebody is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He got a $10 million deal, so. Somebody, somebody is believing him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I never listen to his music either. I just, like you said, first impression. Just, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. But the people that built him and the people that's behind him, you got to look at it like, like Trump, like, these people don't know no other life. This is the life they know. Yeah. So it's like shaking our head, like, oh, this, you know, we know different. We know better, probably, but they don't Broke. know any better. That is true. Mm-hmm. So we get, and then like the Kardashians, they don't know any better. And people need time to grow. I think, especially when you're dealing with young artists who are easier to be manipulated because they haven't figured out what their sound is or what their this or their look or their branding is. They're just trying to get on. And then they're hopefully going to grow over time. And in that time of growth, people are often exploited. And you get, I'm assuming, you get so deep in the stuff, you just kind of end up rolling with it to your own drugs mm-hmm. or go crazy or leave all together. So yeah. people need room to so. make mistakes. I will say that. We're, we're in the cancel culture where we're real, we are real quick to just be like, they did what? F them. They said what? Yeah. Cut them. Yeah. Just boycott. Ugh. And I'll be like, it's so much more serious stuff going on that you right. should be canceling and boycotting right. and some but, silliness. But um, people, I will say, do need room to error. And that first stuff, like what's going on about him spilling the beans or maybe don't spill the beans about everybody. I was just like, actually, what were you telling on? I kind of thought that's what y'all did. And I only say that because <laughs> certain people are real open and and accepting of people that you know nothing about. Just because he got these teeth in his hair and he kicking it with Joe and them, you don't know this man. You don't know his background because he talking a certain way, acting a certain way. That might be all he do now. This is, right? um, he, play, he could be playing a role. Maybe he is from the hood. I don't know. But <laughs> you don't know this man at the point where he's being all involved in this stuff and clearly he wasn't who you thought he was if he's sitting up there on his stands talking and telling people's business. So, y'all need to start picking your people a little bit better. Yeah. And stop just bringing people in your circle all yeah. willy-nilly because they know people and got right. connections. Right. And then tell them you're behind. So, I was like, pick wisely, choose better. <laughs> right. Not right. to say do your dirt better. <laughs> but I'm just saying, hey, choose right. better. Stop letting people mm-hmm. that just look the part in your circle. Stop doing yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And, you could, and you could tell just like with the industry, that's what, it, that's what it's about, like, you know, you're management, your label, hey, yeah. you want to start kicking with so-and-so, and so-and-so mm-hmm. be seen with them at this coffee shop, this cafe, uh, the media gets a hold of pictures of you and so-and-so together, yeah. and just kind of like, you come to find out you messing with the wrong person, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, it happens, yeah, so. Use your judgment. That's right. Mm-hmm. Don't just be letting people lead you astray. Yeah. Just trying to get on. Yeah. It happens real life in between, you know, with friends. Yeah. Like, you find out later, you know, you're really good friends with someone, you find out later they told you business. That is true. Uh, they. I see what you <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. That's sad. Yeah. It so. happens. Yeah. Those stars or rappers, whatever, are no exception. Mm-hmm. Right. So, how did you guys feel? Uh, uh, back to the uh, Diddy and Shug situation mm. with the uh, Tupac and Diddy beef. How did you guys feel about the East, uh, the East West beef then, and how does this alleged information make? feel about it now now that you know that it was a campaign it was a scheme I was all about West Side yeah I was like <laughs> man I'm down with Pac and Snoop forget them and I went to Catholic school okay <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even know too much about rap and I'm like yeah 
Yeah, yeah. You, you yell, you look personal, you don't care. Like I said, you don't care. Yeah, yeah. You, you hear it, you see it. I'm on this side. I live on this side, so I'm on this side. Right. Yeah, it was silliness. Um, I'm going to say you get a little bit older, and it's you see like, hmm, this is a little suspect. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you start paying attention. But when you're younger or you just don't have the wherewithal to think, uh, get off or then you roll with it and be ready to punch somebody out who say Biggie's the best. And I'm like, y'all Pac is the best. They don't know y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't care about you. Right. And you ready to beat somebody up over who, who's the best lyricist or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, like, it's a whole hot mess. But I definitely fell into the trap as a young person. If I was ninth grade, I don't know. But, um, like I said, getting older, you start seeing stuff for what it is, and you just be like, ah. Mm-hmm. And that's when it dies down. People start being like, oh, we didn't give up because they got a peace treaty between each other. People just stopped caring. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the plot ran its course. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, I even thought the Brady Monica beef was fake at one point. Like, I thought they were just forcibly trying to... I thought so, to... too, I heard she punched her in the face. Yeah. So, I, mean, I was like, oh, maybe it was real. Yeah. And more than one person, more than a few people have confirmed that Monica punched her in the face. Yeah. So, I'm like, damn. That's... Did she say that? She said that she did that? She didn't say she, she didn't did that. I mean, she's not going to say it. Like, mm. Oh, my God, I never heard that until she that punch, the punch in the face. Yeah, it was her baby daddy. Yeah, baby daddy. But then I don't trust baby daddies, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is no. just a baby daddy. <laughs> no, but yeah, stuff be happening. Yeah. Some beats be real and you get blown up. Yeah. I mean, these, these horrible uh, situations do lead to people getting hurt and people's lives being taken, which is why it's such a horrible thing that you're doing this for dollars and record sales because you can't control people, as we see yeah. with with the administration and things going on. You get one or two crazy people at the top inciting this emotion in your people, your followers, and and they get crazy and unruly, and then mm-hmm. stuff happens. So yeah, mm-hmm. be careful. Like that little match you trying to steal candy flour. Yeah. Yes. I think it's unfortunate um, mm-hmm. that if it was fake and then it spiraled out of control like that and ended up people losing their lives, like, that was terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, that was terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why, like, even doing the podcast show and stuff, I just watch what I say about certain people because you mm-hmm. never know who's watching, mm-hmm. who you might offend, and what could happen afterwards. <laughs> it's out yeah. there, it's out there, right? People can look it up. 50 years later. That's true, too. That's true, yeah, too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. All right, last question here, y'all. Uh, do you think that these tales from the dark side of the industry will dissuade talented dreamers? Such as? You said, what was the word? Uh, you dissuade. Dissuade. Um, um, I think so. A little tiny bit, but I think that m- maybe they'll, um, like, find their own voice and want to um, see it through. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, because I I want to see it through, like, and I know a lot. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot, you know, and all the everything that's going on. I want to see it through. Like, I feel like I have something to prove. Like, I mean, this is really a passion of mine, so mm-hmm. I want to see it through. So hopefully, other people want to do that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people yeah. who was really put here to do that. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I think that it would, but it, like you said, it's going to make people want to get new damn lines. So if they want to just want to be more independent artists, mm-hmm. then to go under a major label or let's say a major manager or something like that, they probably want to do like more close knit, like find your own people and like build a home with your own <coughs> bond. And yeah. You know, find your own, like how you got your own little connection with producers. Yeah. They might go out and find their own connection with like. Tracy Levenbrook to form since they're not working with like a major mm-hmm. label, but I think that's probably after he, if they heard this stuff, <laughs> like I had to hear it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, they're definitely like I'm not dealing with nobody. You can't trust me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna be different. Yeah, I'm gonna say that they gonna try it anyway. Mm-hmm. People, I think, who really want something so bad. I think are gonna be like, well, people just be talking, and well, we don't really know. And I had this opportunity, so I definitely think they done it. 
though some, most people I think are going to have to get burned first mm-hmm. to learn. Yeah. They're going to go through, go up and get into whatever situation or situations and then learn where they at in those moments. Some people say, I would never. And the situation come up and then they do. Some people be like, well, I don't know. And it come up, you be like, hell no. You know what I'm saying? So I just think that if you really, really, really just want it that bad, I think you don't care what nobody say. You gonna go on, you gonna do your thing, and as stuff come along, you just gonna figure out who you are, what you will and won't do, and then as you move further along, we'll determine whether you stay, and if you stay, what direction you're gonna go, or if you're gonna leave altogether. But I definitely think people, what they hear is not gonna be a deterrent. Mm-hmm. I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we're all still determined to you know, achieve our goals and live our dreams. Because yeah. it's like, no matter what happens, what people say, what people do, like, mm-hmm. oh well, you know what I mean? You like to mm-hmm. think you know who you are, that you would, or what you do certain things. Right. You don't know until you get tested. That's life. Just yeah. in the regular day, you just don't know until you get tested. Yeah. I would never punch somebody in the face. That's wrong. Until. <laughs> right, until. <laughs> so, yeah. Until <laughs> so she gets below the belt. You just say, you're like, all right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what you want to do. Yeah. No, I had a uh, I had a friend. Uh, she went to a Snoop Dogg concert and uh, she met his manager. Mm. And you know, she's the type of artist like you know I would never do anything sexual or no favors like that. You know, in order to get in the game. And he kind of tricked her. He pulled her uh, he pulled her back to his hotel. And he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna let you meet Snoop and you know get to know him mm. because you're gonna be one of my you know first artists from my label." And so she was like, "Okay." And they were in his room, and he was like, yeah, you know, let me listen to your album. And I guess they were listening to her album, and then they started smoking. Mm. And apparently, the kind of weed they were smoking, it was, what, high, like in THC? Okay. Yeah. And so she just started getting a little bit, you know, delirious and couldn't really concentrate. And after that, she said that uh, he took off his pants and got in the bed, got real comfortable, and was like, yeah, you know, so, um, you know, your album's really good. Um. You know, uh, let, let's move forward. <laughs> and she was like, no. Mm-hmm. She, but at first she thought about it like, hmm, like what? Yeah. This is Snoop Dogg's your face, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. Yeah. a big ass stack of money on the table. Right, no, right. right. <laughs> and it's like, all this can be yours. All you got to do is. Right. And be like, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it's the pain. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a hard. To, I don't think there's anything wrong with considering your options so that you can make the best decision for you. Yeah, that's you know? true. That's true. I can say well, I think the best decision is right. Because it's your decision. Right. <laughs> like sex tapes. I mean, you know, if that's what is going to pay the bills, then <laughs> <laughs> like I said, if you can walk away from whatever you just did with your integrity and your head up. You okay? You don't go home taking showers and crying and stuff. Yeah. Then yeah. okay, you all right, I guess. I gotta see my therapist. As long as you yeah. ain't hurt nobody, you're not hurting yourself. You're yeah. not hurting nobody else. That's what I say. Don't hurt nobody else intentionally, and and don't hurt yourself, you know, intentionally. Then all right, it's okay. You can figure it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I always like to think that we all are living for other people mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. Um. So like, you know what I mean? So like, our stories can like help inspire other people. Yep. Yeah. One story can save 20 women or, yeah. you know, 20 men or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, sometimes things happen um, that we don't want to happen. And then they happen. And then, yep. But we learn from it. And if we can inspire other people, then mm-hmm. that was the goal. That's, yep. I mean, because bad things is going to happen anyway. Mm-hmm. And I think God knows that. And that's why there's this word called testimony. Mm-hmm. And, Deliverance and things like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. not saying do bad things and then talk about it <laughs> and inspire people. But there's people who is backed in a corner. Yeah, people yeah. who don't have a way, and God is with them every step of the way. You know, but mm-hmm. of course that's not something you would have wanted to happen. But it just happens. Stuff happens. Yeah. yeah, and if we can avoid it, then it will be avoided from it, right? But mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys, I'm going to wrap this up again, y'all. We had Keisha Quillen. Uh, she has an album called the, is it the Keisha Collection? The, the Keisha Collection, yes. The Keisha Collection. <laughs> Everything is spelled with a K. <laughs> and 
tell them where they can find you again. Um, YouTube, um, my Instagram, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon Music. Um, everything is Keidra on stage, all of my social media handles. Keidra on stage, K-E-I-D-R-A on stage. Ooh, yes. All right, <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for coming. And I'd like to thank, thank my lovely co host, Brandy Ellis, Hi. Diamond Brown. Okay, they're yeah. doing their thing too. They got podcasts and music coming out. Awesome. So, gotta all support each other. Yes, right. definitely. Shout out to uh, Amazon Queen Productions and all their music presents. And you guys have a wonderful night. Yay. Good night.